Howdy doody folks, hope you're doing well, it's Barry here. This is a video that some of you guys have wanted to see for a very, very long time. But the fact that you are now seeing this video means that my merchandise, my gadgets are now available. Well, not all of them might not be just yet, but let me just give you a summary of, of what's there. First up, I have got loads of these in my garage. Don't believe me? Check this out. Look, never seen so many Barry's in a box. I've actually got four more of these boxes. 600 of these have been in my garage. So yep, these are some silicon mats that you might have seen me use in a video before. So basically, uh, they're also known as seal pads. I just got them that sort of my logo on like this. They look pretty darn cool, don't they? Got the Barry Lewis logo. And when I sort of got them made, I was like, I didn't realize so many of these things existed. I tested about three different versions out. All look quite similar, but two were particularly quite bad. I was really happy with these, but just trying to get the idea right. So I went for a small baking tray and just a large one, but some of you might have seen in videos where I've been using it, you can see that I've had to cut it to size just to fit into my tray. And that's what's great about it. You can make it snugly fit your tray. So this is perfect for baking cookies, oven chips, whatever, rather than having to reuse baking parchment. Well, in fact, you don't. You just tend to use it once and then chuck it away. Or even sometimes like Mrs. Barry, she used to just use the, the core of the tray, stick that down, machine wash it, boom. And this is the thing, I've, about a year ago, I didn't really even knew these things existed, but now we can't live without them. So this is one of the first things that I wanted to bring out, just customized my logo on a little bit like that, but these are genuinely super, super helpful. If I was one thing that I would suggest though, is when you're not using them, treat them like baking parchment and keep them in your cupboards. If you leave them in the oven to fluctuate temperature all the time, it can sometimes, which I found with nearly all seal pads, they can start to sort of bubble up and stain. You just want to kind of treat them, that they're just there when you need them, shove them in the oven, wash them, Clean them, keep them in your cupboard. I bloomin' love them. I've shown this in a few videos as well. Out of the three things that I'm showing you today, this is probably the last thing to come up, but again, one of the most useful. I've really got in love with the whole concept of baking cakes, and Mrs. Barry particularly, she loves making cakes, and cake stands are just so useful. And you would, I've actually tested five different ones of these. You wouldn't believe there's some that I got sent that had like non-slip feet. Someone down in the UK, uh, about 30 miles from where I live, sent me one, uh, who a company I was gonna work with, and I'm like, uh, I have to have to take the feet off, it makes a horrendous noise. And if you try and frost the cake and it'd be like... But these are really useful because you can actually, um, they, well, they, they store really, really well, but you could just take the base plate off to put the cake on and then sit it on top just to have it as a presentation thing. But for frosting it, it just kind of sits on a, a ball bearing sort of strip like that that tucks in like that. And I've actually found the easiest way to put it in is just to do it upside down like that. And then you can just basically sit your cake on, spin it round, frost it, decorate it and present it like that. Just so simple, Just that's what I'm trying to launch these first few ones, just some ones to really help do the basics. So this is my main kit that I'm bringing out first of all. I aim to do more kits like baking kits and things like that and you would not believe the effort I have gone to to make this thing. When it came to sourcing these products, all the ones you've seen today, the reason it's probably taken so long as well, I had three very simple rules. One, it had to be a product that if I said that I would use, that I literally would use and endorse. I'm not gonna say, oh, I like that and never use it. I literally tested these hard. Two, it had to feel like good quality, sturdy, safe, and trust that there's some really, I'll come on to it in a minute, some really bad ones out there. Three, where the product was sourced from, whether it was in England, some in London, uh, some in India, some in Europe, some in America, some Australia, some in uh, China, wherever it came from, that the manufacturer had an awesome reputation and that they actually sourced it as environmentally friendly as possible. Those three things were massive to me. Like even using recycled goods like meant a lot and <laughs> like I told you about the garage, like with the silicon mats there. I just want to show you this back here. In th all these boxes, there are over 25 different veggie choppers and spiralizers and things that I've been looking at going, what would make the ultimate kit that I would be happy to sell? I've got a few to show you, hang on. There was this spir <laughs> spiralizer kit that just felt so dangerous. Bits would fall out of it. You try and spiralize and it didn't have any grippers on the bottom so you'd be trying to push it along and it would just like, rather than stay, it would just slide off. I had this thing called a drum grater which a lot of you messaged me still on Instagram tagging me in these videos going, oh look at this. This thing was so bad. Like you'd put, like the, the handle was so flimsy and it's just, 
it just feels really cheap and it, it had no strength whatsoever. For herbs, you had to push it down. You could use this to get it down, but other bigger things, it just didn't do it. And that was when I realized I needed something a bit more substantial. There was this one that came from London. And I was like, oh wow, it's British supply. It's gonna be great. And it was actually lethal. There was one of the blades here. Was it the six? That's why it's upside down. I, I don't know if you remember, there was a scar on my finger there and a video for a few weeks, I had a plaster there. That was what did it. I opened the packaging and it was exposed. The blade was loose on it. I'm still talking to that company, but not about using them. And there was this one as well that came that was just so clunky. There was another bit with it that I actually physically snapped when I used it. It's not very non-slip. And this bit here, you can't remove the lid off to use some other functions, which with the one I've got, you can do it all together. I found one that works. I might just have to do a video reviewing every single one of those on another day because they were just like so dangerous. Some of them I was like, you cannot sell that. And I will not put my name to it. Ultimately, I was trying to source something for my veggie kit that I could say, look, hey, if you get this, you can basically prepare and chop and slice nearly every vegetable you can think of and fruits. There are some others that are gonna need a teeny bit of help, but it will get you by and just give you a kickstart in the kitchen. Now the box has got a bit damaged because I've been opening and showing friends and family so much, but there's so much in here. <laughs> There's also an instruction manual as well, but hey, you know I don't use those. You probably can't see much difference between these two, but I had 10 different garlic peelers sent to me. This one's slightly glossier looking, but when you try and use it, for some reason it just doesn't work. So I had to find one that works an absolute charm. So that's, well, that's in there. This one isn't. It's not a dog toy. So actually what I think I'll do is start with the garlic thing. This has been one of my favorite things of all time that I've shown in previous videos, a garlic rocker. So in the veggie prep pack comes an actual garlic tube so you can roll and peel your garlic and then chop it easily and scoop it off. The two combos together, absolutely love and they will be available separately, but as a kit, first of all. I wasn't planning on putting one of these in there, but from a result of my testing, I was like, do you know what? The anti-cut gloves that I had in one of my gadget videos, I'm gonna shove one of those in there just so that when you're using one of these, I mean, it doesn't have to be with a peeler, but maybe when you're doing something like the Julienne stuff, just for added security and peace of mind, just to use that on the cutting hand, it makes you feel a bit better, or like a mime artist. When it comes to peelers, there's two of those in a pack, Barry Lewis ones like that, and I had to pick some of these that are nice and lightweight, but a big, thick, chunky handle. You've got a standard one, and then you've got one that spiralizes. You can just take the cap off a bit like a razor, and then you got that. I just love this, really good for salads and stuff, where you just get nice thin matchstick carrots. And the cool thing I like is when you're not using it, you just sort of push that back on, lift that up, click it into place, and it's nice and safe in your drawer. Cool stuff. But that and a standard peeler, same method, is there. This was what I liked about my kit. Oh, and they Barry Lewis on it, of course, but it was just sturdy, it felt good quality, non-slip, really good non-slip on the bottom of it as well, and it was just enough. It wasn't overkill with too many blades sticking out everywhere. It can get you by, and also, it's got a lid. So I'll come on to that in a minute, what you can do. It's just something as simple as a lid is my life now. If you remember the uh, paprika chicken video I did, the Alton Brown one, where I put a potato on there and then you run it up and down to slice the potatoes, that is phenomenal. Julienne in potatoes. There is another brush that comes with it as well to clean it, to get it out of all these bits. But in fact, you might remember the original gadget video, I discovered one of these um, and it was just basically a potato slicer. So you've got your, like, your main body bit here and what you do, you unclip down the bottom. That's what I liked about it. Other ones were welded, so you had other bits, but you can interchange it. So you push these bits together, you sit your other bit in. See, this is your gripper, okay? So that's gonna grip the vegetable. And then you just pick whichever one you want, click it into place. I don't know how satisfying that click was when I discovered it. The one thing I will say with these things is to get the most out of them, as I've put in the manual, you really need to just give it a little bit of help. So, I mean, to halve an onion just like this, rather than putting a whole onion in, or ideally quartering it can help you massively. Putting it in there, straight down, boom. Look at that, straight through. It's nice and strong. It feels light, but you just need to help it. And you can just take that off, stick your lid on. I get really excited about the lid. Put it in your fridge and carry on with your life. I mean, that's the whole thing with it. You've got to love it and it will love you back. If you start putting whole like whole vegetables on it, it'll be like, nah, I'm not gonna be your friend. I'm not gonna last long. But things like just changing it to a thin strip one like that, getting a courgette or a zucchini and then just pushing it through like that. One of the softer vegetables, easy peasy. Slices. Mushrooms, you don't even need to worry about them. They just go straight down. It's just like, yeah, cool. 
Okay, so say rather than doing the handheld spiralizer thing, you want to do like some slices. You've got two different ones here. You've got one with a, a straight blade or one with actual segments, which will do the strips like the carrot. So let's do that one actually. It just pops in like so, straight there. And then from you, <laughs> obviously you're not gonna have a carrot like that, but you can just twist it straight into the base. You see the bits of carrot coming through? Awesome. Then again, you just pop that out. Say you want to do some slicing again. Push this bit out as well. Push that back in so that's in place. You see what I mean? It just feels firm and safe. I didn't get that with a lot of them. And the cool thing is you can actually have it other ways around. So if you prefer to go one way rather than the other, you just got to make sure that you line up your two bits with it. That's it. <laughs> oh, this bit is actually what should have gone, you know, when I just did the carrot by hand and made a carrot crayon. Uh, that's what would normally go into there or your, you know, your back of your courgette like that and just spin that way. But doing it by hand is quite fun. You can see how the blade is facing that way though. If I want it so it's facing this way, and whenever I'm doing the thin slice thing, I would put the glove on 100%. But you can get something like your courgette, pierce it on, and then just go up and down. So use your non-covered hand to hold it and support the base. And the slicey one is where you've got your glove, all right? I haven't looked, but I can feel that it's getting lower. You know, you might want to pick it up. You might just want to walk around with it, be like, hello, yeah. Cool. But seriously though, I mean, you might be the most confident person in the world, wherever you can, if you do want to put a glove on like that just to protect you, you should hopefully, well hey, end up with really nice thin courgette. And that's the basics of the veggie prep kit. There's like a grating attachment that goes on there as well. You can get around and you chop and prepare so many vegetables. I'm not saying don't do this instead of basic knife skills, but when you're in a hurry, particularly with kids for us, making a ratatouille, which is what we're gonna have tonight, something like that, boom, boom, boom. Easy peasy. Okay, so hopefully you can see why it's taken me so long <laughs> to get this right. At one point, like I say, I was like, no, I just can't find it. But this just appeared and I was like, this is really cool. It's compact, it stores well. It's got near enough everything you need as a head start. And when you need that quick time saving fix, the same with the seal pats and the cake stand, just finding the ones that I put my name to. I've actually put quite a significant investment into this because I just wanted to get some initial stock, but there won't be that much there. So if you guys like it and once you get it, you can give me your feedback and we can keep tweaking it and adding more products as we go but for me this is a massive moment for me if you are interested in getting one there should be a link down below to the store order away let me know what you think and i'll see you next time and as for these actually i don't know what to do with them i think i'll just put them on ebay and let someone else cut their finger mm. check your level player no matter what your style the kitchen's for me cyber's mustache goatee maybe all three 